Welcome today. Uh, we are talking with Jen Conley, who is a certified life coach from Fort Worth, Texas. And thank you for being here. I'm so excited to get to know more about what you do. Thanks I met Jen me. in, oh, you're so welcome. I <laughs> met Jen in Austin, Texas a couple of weeks ago, and we were in the same area having lunch at Brendan Burchard's Growth Day conference. It was so fun to be there. And we just hit it off, exchanged cards, and now here we are. We are connected uh, doing this video. So, Jen, tell me a little bit about what you do and why you do it. So I was I was certified in hypnosis years ago. Um, I didn't, you know, I, I thought I was going to go conquer the world. I was in my probably mid-20s. Um, and then back then, though, it was so hard to start a business by yourself. You had to go get an office. You had to advertise in the yellow pages. And so then I decided to, you know, this is, I, I completely changed careers and I went into massage therapy and I, in, a, in an idea to combine the two. Um, and then enter family life and um, I started working for my family's business and I hung up both hats. Um, something that came up in the conference that we were at was um, when she was doing the hiding in plain sight um, meditation, I realized that I was still really angry at myself for not pursuing, you know, just my, my passion for helping other people back then um and so i i did you know to for to realize it then i could let that go because then i also thought i wouldn't have met my husband i wouldn't have you know maybe i wouldn't have had the same daughter because you know i would have met someone else um and my daughter wouldn't see all the hard work that i'm i'm um pursuing now to finally pursue my dream she is she just turned 16 so she's like she's you know really seeing it she's helping me but so what i've pivoted to now is when the pandemic happened i um i sat down and decided that i didn't want to be in the office of my parents um business for the rest of my life so i went on i became a certified life coach and then i um got some other um, continuing education certifications past that. And then recently I, I was, um, diagnosed with ADHD in my thirties, hence why I'm all over the place. <laughs> Kidding. Um, but, uh, I just recently realized that a lot of my confidence and self-esteem struggles are directly related to my ADHD and anxiety that I have. And so during the pandemic, when I was getting certified, I also got really depressed. And so I started making hypnosis tapes for myself, like I had done um, in the past. And I, I, in my continuing education, I, um, I learned um, cognitive behavioral um, techniques, and I learned um, something called the three principles that is very similar. And I helped myself get out of my own depression by learning how to let go of my own thinking. Um, one thing that I learned that I didn't know before is that thoughts are completely random. We think we control the thoughts that, that come in and we have no control over them. Like, for example, if you see someone and you don't think they look right, like you'll have the thought, especially as women, we'll have this thought that comes into our mind about how they look. And that's not who I am at all. I didn't control that, but I can control sending it right back out. Um, I can control telling myself who I really am and why did I even think that. Um, we just, we have thousands and thousands of thought. And so um, the idea is there's, you know, there's a circle or a triangle of sorts with thoughts at the top and thoughts, um, they, uh, what story I'm looking for, thoughts create our feelings and then feelings create our behavior or action. And then our actions influence more thought and it's this vicious cycle. But the one we can control before the other two is the thoughts we're having about it. Um, this understanding also helped my relationship with my husband because we were 
in the worst place we've ever been at that time. Um, after 2020 and 2021, we had the hardest year ever. My daughter was in middle school <laughs> and that's the hardest stage we've ever gone through. Um, and my husband was having really bad back problems. And, you know, I was probably starting to come out of my own depression, but neither, none of us were being our best selves and we're all in the house together. And if you remember 2021, you still didn't go out of the house that much. So we're also all in the house all the time. You know, I, I'm sure a lot of people had problems, but when I really got the idea that all of my thoughts about how he was talking to me and what he was saying to me didn't have to matter, and it didn't have to be my stuff, that that could be his stuff. Um, that really changed me. And then I think it also brought me to the idea that I think I was misinterpreting or interpreting at all what he was saying, because I shouldn't interpret what he's saying without asking him, hey, what do you mean by that? Um, but a lot of that was coming from my childhood and my ADHD and always being you know, we're, we do things differently. And so you get more criticism than the average person in that regard. You know, I didn't do well in school and teachers would be like, she's daydreamy. She, she doesn't try hard enough. You know, friends would lovingly make fun of me and I started making fun of myself and I didn't really, I don't think it affected me or I didn't think, but in hindsight, yeah, it, it probably did. You know, I probably soaked all of that in. And then I picked up the mantle of, you know, I would say I pulled a gin, like when I did something silly or, or stupid or like klutzy. Um, but so I just, I want to help women who weren't diagnosed with ADHD may think that they have it because a lot of times you really need work on your relationship with self. So that is, that brings me to my current passion for helping women with, with ADHD, just maybe um, deciding whether uh, they want to get a diagnosis to how to kind of help the busy chatter brain that goes on inside your mind once you are diagnosed. Or even if not, because that's, Part of it too is that we always have it is not attention deficit it's attention surplus we are always talking chatting inside our brain um and it doesn't stop and so you know good decisions are made with a clear mind and so i've just learned techniques to help clear and calm the brain to be able to make good decisions and to not let outside influences decide who we are mm -hmm. So you got really depressed uh, during the pandemic because you were all stuck in the house together and you weren't getting out and going anywhere. And yeah. that's when the ADHD symptoms peaked mm -hmm. and you went, wait a minute, there's more going on here than just depression. Am I reading that right? I, or is... I did always already understand that ADHD can cause depression. Um, I think okay. what it is, is I realized how to help myself out of it. Um, and I can't remember what the specific thing is that I made the connection of. I think what it was, was that um, I, I read somewhere that cognitive behavioral techniques um, help with ADHD. Besides medicine, it's the number one thing. And I right. thought, well, that's right. how I got myself out of depression. So maybe I can help women um that are going through the same thing in the same way okay i'm also okay. really i'm really empathetic so i think a lot of my depression was all the things going on in the world like it mm -hmm. just felt yeah. very heavy you know things other mm -hmm. people were going through too like i w everybody i knew was going through something really heavy um and so it right. just felt i just i, I i'm very i i'm an empath i feel things that are going okay. on Okay. I did have to quit watching so much news. <laughs> yeah. My yeah. Didn't we? Maybe that should be we, part yeah. of the description to quit watching the news all the time. Yes. We need to know what's going on, yes. but we don't need to start our day like that. <laughs> yeah. And I started and don't live like your life on. Day. Yeah. Don't live your life on YouTube. Right. 
watching all the the news videos. Yeah, I know. I it's easy to get caught in that loop because it 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 gives a peak of you know, energy, it gets your neurotransmitters going and you can get addicted to it very quickly. Mm -hmm. And then you start in this downward spiral of, oh my gosh, you know, the world's going to hell in a handbasket and there's no hope, Uh, which is one of the things that I really like about Brendan Bouchard and Growth Day Mm -hmm. is that, you know, it, there is hope. You don't have to live in that space. And it sounds like that's a lot of what your mindset has been pretty much all along is that, you know, I have choices here and I'm going to make those choices. And one of those is to use your, your techniques, use your strategies on yourself first Mm -hmm. to make sure that they work. So you're using cognitive behavioral techniques to help you uh, with your depression and then to use it also with the ADHD symptoms Mm -hmm. to be able to manage your thoughts, your feelings and your behaviors that uh, uh, I forgot what you call that. The three, what did you call it? It's the three principles and the three principles are um, thought, mind and universe. And it it gets a little deeper than just thought, but the, the thing that we can control, the thing that really spoke to me was, was the thoughts and not letting it, not okay. um, a, a good metaphor um, is to think of thoughts like clouds and to think of, of ones that you want to discard like, like gray storming clouds and you're always the blue sky behind it. So when I have a thought come in, I, not very long ago, my husband like was rushing us out of somewhere. And I think before I would have gotten really upset at him because I felt like he was being a little neurotic, having to get our daughter somewhere where we had plenty of time, right? And in my head, I started getting amped up, like what you just talked about, the neurotransmitters. And um, it does Mm -hmm. make us behave differently if we let ourselves do that. Um, And I just decided, I was like, wait a minute, that's his stuff. He can be upset and want to rush around and want to Mm -hmm. worry about whether we're going to get our daughter there. And I can let him keep that. I don't have to take it mm-hmm. on. Yeah. Because, you know, it was with my family. So I was kind of upset that we were just rushing out and I didn't get to say bye. But at that mm-hmm. point, I realized I couldn't change it. And I I don't want to be upset. So I just let right. those thoughts go right back out. And I don't, if I consciously catch it, um, there. there's another concept called um, catch it check it and change it. And, you know, Um, my thing is let it go. You don't even have to uh try to change it. You just need to, and people talk about it like saying choices and you have a choice. I feel like if you talk about it in relation to thoughts, it makes it more explainable because everybody can understand what that is. And, but the skill is catching it. It's really catching mm-hmm. what you're doing in the moment. Okay. Could you say those three things again? That uh, catch it, catch well, it, well, check it, and change it. Okay. 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 I like that. Yeah. I like that. That's a <laughs> an easy. I like the. I like alliteration. It helps me remember things. Mm-hmm. So um, very very cool. So you've been helping people through hypnosis. You've used cognitive behavioral techniques before you're a certified coach and you really want to help women who have ADHD Mm -hmm. or think they have ADHD Mm -hmm. and you help them figure out how to do what? Um, Basically help them figure out um, just how to calm all the thoughts that just go around in their head. Um, Mm -hmm. I watched a really good video the other day that explains ADHD well and he you know, he'll, he, this guy makes videos in a role play. And so he's like, like this one part was his brain and one part's him. And he's like, okay, what are we going to do today? And he's writing on a chalkboard and he's like, oh, we got to go to the doctor. And he writes on the chalkboard and then he's like, okay, what else? And we got to do something else. And he writes over it and then he writes over ah. it again. And so at the end, you can't even read what it is. So basically like just okay. techniques to, to help organize your brain. Like you need to have 
um, you need to have things that are important to you all in one place is one thing. And I don't always practice um, that. I think I, I, I told you a lot of times I have sticky notes all over my desk and that's really not the best way to, um, to, to keep information. So basically just um, there's an anxiety component um, to ADHD that I really want to help with. For sure. Yeah, for sure. And it's, it's cool that you are still living with it and still coping with it yourself, which helps mm -hmm. you to identify with your clients, with your coaching clients a lot more, because when yeah. they say, I keep doing this, then you can go, oh yeah, me too. And so mm -hmm. that helps you also recall the techniques that you can use to help yourself, even as you're helping your client, learning some strategies that will help her with her own issues, whatever those happen to be. Right. So now do you work with people uh, only in Fort Worth, only in Texas? Are you open to working with people from other countries or other states? Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about your range. Yeah, I do almost everything online. Um, I've just rolled out also a um, text me program to where, um, you know, I, I can basically be a coach that you text if you would rather that. And you actually yeah. have more access that way because, you know, I can send a text in a few seconds or I can think about what I really want to say. Um, and people can use that in the moment they need it because ADHD isn't the same from every day to day to day. It's not the same from moment to moment. Um, this week, I've really mm. had a hard week. I've really been overwhelmed after our conference. You know, it's kind of getting back into, mm. into real life. Last weekend was really busy. So I usually work, do a lot of work on my practice over the weekend. I like to create things mm -hmm. and I didn't get to. And so this week, I've really kind of felt out of sorts. And I feel like that's another way I can help too, because I am, I don't have it all figured out. I'm figuring it out with you. Every day is different. Every mm -hmm. situation is different. ADHD isn't the same from, from woman to woman either. And I'm also still figuring, mm -hmm. I've learned new things about it even in the last year that I've um, really decided to bring education to it. Um, I, 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 I've even learned things I didn't know. There are things about myself mm -hmm. that I didn't know were related. Um, apparently mm -hmm. there is an aversion to authority that is common in ADHD. <laughs> and I just thought it was a me thing, but it, it can be a symptom. I don't know why I have, I need to research that more of the why I have my idea of why, but um, yeah, that was interesting. I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah, that is an interesting topic. So if you get a new person who wants to work with you, do you, um, do you automatically just sign them up? Do you meet with them for like an initial mm -hmm. consultation of some sort? How does that work? I always have a free consultation, except for the text me, you know, that I won't do a consultation for that. And I haven't had anyone do that just yet. So still kind of figuring out like what the rules around it need okay. to be. Um, but I also have courses online. Um, I have a uh, mm. I have a course on hypnosis, I have a course on ADHD, and I have a course on um, CBT or the, the cognitive behavioral techniques. Um, okay. And then I have, I have eBooks on all three as well. So that'd be a good way for you to know whether you wanted to work with me or not. Um, okay. And those are all available from your website? Mm -hmm. And what is your website address? And we'll put it on the bottom of the screen. Okay. It's um, in your words, lifecoach.com. And the in okay. your words started out with the hypnosis because my, my, actually my, for, my hypnosis course is on self hypnosis. It's on how to make oh, your own recording. Okay. Um, but, I, and I love the idea of it, but I didn't get a lot of response from that. So it's still there. Um, and maybe I just mm -hmm. need to figure out a different way to promote that because I think people could really uh -huh. change their own lives if they could learn. I mean, you don't even have to do, you don't have to do all the hypnosis things. The, the thing is, is if you, if you listen to meditations right before you go to sleep, um, or mm -hmm. sometimes I call it guided meditations because I think people are more open to that. That's really what it is. Um, mm -hmm. But if you listen to it right before you go to sleep, your brain is in a different 
um, state then. You are in between wake and sleep, and that is a hypnotic state. And so that's what I did. I would just listen to those recordings before I went to sleep. So I'd, I'd, I would love to teach other people to do that as well. Yeah, you sent me a link to one of your meditations mm -hmm. on YouTube, and I listened to it for just a few minutes, and I was like, oh my gosh, her voice is so soothing, because <laughs> you talk in that in a different way than you're talking mm -hmm. now. I you do. know, it's it's softer, much more gently paced, mm -hmm. and I can see where making a habit of that totally could take that anxiety right away even if they mm -hmm. don't pay attention to the words that you're using i you know it's just it's the right. soothing sound of your voice is so powerful and of course youtube is a free resource so i'd really encourage people to yes. check that out as well I, yeah. right because that is that's that's up on my on my youtube channel too and i think on youtube i'm just jen conley one n c o n l e y um, you can look me up by my name and it's like Jen Conley, ADHD coach. Okay. Yeah. We'll put all the links down below so everybody can find you. I want them to be able to reach you in any way that they can, but you're open to working with people all around. Mm -hmm. You've got YouTube videos. You've got some eBooks that uh, people can download. You've got mm -hmm. courses they can take off from your website. And then they can also, yeah. if they want to work, you one on one, then you offer a free consultation mm -hmm. that I'm assuming they can they can reach you through the website to do that. Yes, Is that they can correct? absolutely book that on the website as well. So, um, about how long do your clients usually stay with you? Is it something that they learn about and then they just take it and run from there, or is it more of an ongoing process for the people that you help with this the ADHD issues? The coaching program is about seven to eight weeks. But I am uh, building this great community of ongoing help where we have a group that you can get um, support from other women. That's a, that's a thing about ADH women, too. We don't always know other women that are going through the same thing. Um, and then so it's a, it's a group that you can communicate in. And then we have group coaching calls once a month. And you also okay. in that group have um, access to all of my courses and all of my ebooks as well. Okay. So, so someone could sign up for the seven to eight week coaching program mm -hmm. and, or they could sign up for your membership program right. that includes this online community where women can actually uh, talk to one another about their challenges and mm -hmm. provide mutual support, but they also get access to your courses and you do a weekly coaching group coaching call. Group Did coaching. I get that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. That's, that's really cool. And uh, boy, I applaud you for doing this because mm -hmm. we think of ADHD as being something that, that elementary school boys have. Mm -hmm. That's been kind of the stereotype of the ADHD yes. person. Uh, mm -hmm. When I did my pre-doctoral internship at the University of Kansas in their counseling and psychological services department, um, I did a lot of evaluations for students who had ADHD. And one of the big questions was always, is this anxiety or is it ADHD? Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, especially with a freshman who had not been diagnosed before, a ton of it was anxiety. Yeah. But what I hear you saying is that you uh, see those two, you know, very closely related to one another. Yeah. And is it even important to distinguish which it is or how do you approach that question? It was for me, but I think that's very personal. You know, to, to get help for ADHD, you don't have to have a diagnosis. It helped me. Um, but you know, it, even if you think you have it and you don't want to get diagnosed, you know, we could still talk about it and we could still help the symptoms that you think that you are having trouble with. And one of those is anxiety. You know, I'm not a therapist. So if you're depressed, I, I'm not going to try to, you know, cure that. If, if you're, if, if someone is truly depressed, they might need a therapist to go along or a psychologist to go along with, with what we do together. But um, um, it just, anxiety can sometimes feel like AD, ADHD 
it really can. It can make you feel scattered and just not right. Your brain doesn't work in the same way that it normally does. So it really is hard. When I went to the doctor, we treated the anxiety first. Um, she gave me Wellbutrin because she said it helps with ADHD and anxiety. So we're going to start there. And it did help for a little while. Um, and part of my anxiety was situational. So we also wanted to see that if my, when my situation changed, would it change? Um, but I did go back a few months later um, and it had helped a little bit, but I still wanted to know. I wanted to know for my own. Okay. Okay. And okay. So, so someone yeah. who, who is anxious and has scattered thoughts or someone who has anxiety because they have ADHD, it, the solutions are pretty much the same as what I'm yes. hearing you say is that, that the techniques that you teach can be used for any of those. And mm -hmm. of course there are levels of, uh, either one of those that may require some medical intervention. So a diagnosis with, you know, a psychologist, a psychiatrist would be in order for that. Yes. And that would be something that you would explore with people and encourage them to do if they felt 100%. like they needed more than that. Right. hundred yeah. percent. Yes. Um, yeah. You know, the medication helps with the, the, the brain part that I, you know, I can't go in and change your, 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 the chemical, yeah. you know, imbalance or right. imbalance of your brain. Right. So the, the, it really is both of those mm -hmm. together are really the answer. Mm -hmm. Um, some people do not want to take medication mm -hmm. and that is a personal choice. Um, sure. but there, there's a saying, uh, that pills don't teach skills. <laughs> and so that's why you yes. need both. So I really do right. think having both yeah. is, is, is the best way to go. Right. And in my training as a clinical psychologist, one of the things that we learned about, you know, anxiety and depression, both are that you can ha have an impact with medication or you can have an impact with interventions and meaning, you know, coaching or therapy. Mm -hmm. And that if you're really struggling, both might be the best option for you to take to do those two yeah. things together. So this would be a good place. It sounds like Jen, for people to, to come on that are, are curious about, do I have ADHD or not? What's going mm -hmm. on for me? They can, watch your videos, you know, take your courses, download your books and, mm -hmm. you know, maybe even have a consultation with you. So it can be part of the process of helping them figure out what do I need? Where do I need to go? Mm -hmm. And if they find your, your material is helpful, then you're available to provide that for them, not only in your seven to eight week coaching program, but also by this ongoing membership program that right. you've developed that it provides the support and ongoing training as well mm -hmm. in how to cope with symptoms of ADHD. So right. that's really- And the best really, place to start like, really is yeah. the membership because it is less of a commitment than the one-on-one. -on -one. And then if they need help past that, then that, that's where I would suggest they, they start, either with one of the okay. courses or the membership. And then if we need more one-on-one, -on -one, then we would go that, that, that. Okay. Route. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. And that's kind of how I have my program set up too, mm -hmm. is I've essentially got the same things that you do, mm -hmm. only it's about relationships. And, mm -hmm. the, you know, if someone really wants me to sit down with them one-on-one, -on -one, my program is 12 weeks, but, mm -hmm. um, that's available as well. But I like for people to have an idea what they're getting into. Mm -hmm. And do I really need the extra help? Because honestly, a lot of people can do an online course or be part of a membership group and may have all the benefit that they need. And they don't really right. need to have that one on one. So how cool that you've got those resources available for people. Yeah. I'm so excited I... for you. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I just, I, I think there is a group dynamic that is different and, and for some, maybe even better to have a, a group of support and support of women, you know, um, right. some may find that that is, that's enough, um, and more mm -hmm. than enough to have someone mm -hmm. to go to and talk about those things. 
you know, you, your friends mm -hmm. may not understand the anxiety part of it. Mm -hmm. They may not understand, mm -hmm. they definitely um, don't understand some of the nuances of ADHD unless they are. Um, yeah. And it's also a good place to learn how to explain it to people. When I learned how okay. to explain how I am, the way I am to my husband, he understood me so much more. Mm. We don't have the same nitpicky fights that we did when we were first together. Okay. So that's something else that you can help the women with then is, is how to talk to your husband, your family, your friends right, about their relationships why about. you're, yeah. Why you're doing the things that you do. That's mm -hmm. very good. Um, I, I wonder as I'm thinking about this in the, in the group setting, do you find that uh, women are hesitant to step into a group like that? Does shame play a factor at all in that? And probably a little bit. Um, uh -huh. I'm hoping to overcome that. Um, you okay. know, that's, I, I try to make sure that they know it's a, it's a safe place. Um, that, you know, nothing is too, too big to talk about and that we've probably been through the same things. Right. And that's really cool that you're willing to share some of your struggles too, because it's like, well, if you're not ashamed to talk about it, then I don't have to be ashamed either. Yeah. So that's, that's really cool. I know with my online stuff, that's totally to the public that mm -hmm. I have a hard time getting people to talk about yes. Uh, what's going on in their relationships but yeah. in you know my Facebook group where it's a very small group of women who are there for the same reason they're much more likely to share yes. some of their struggles mm -hmm. so and they yeah. know it's private because there's a little you know, yes they know it's not going out there. to the whole world right. yeah mm -hmm. yeah very good well is there anything else that you want to share as we're kind of wrapping things up here that we've missed i know you had kind of a checklist of things that you wanted to talk about you want to glance at that for a minute make sure we don't miss anything i think we got everything except for just i want to circle back to i think i did say it in the beginning but we didn't expand on it is that part of what i want to help women with in particular is your relationship with yourself you know there you, okay. your relationship with ourself is the most important in my view because you your relationship with everyone else comes from that it's the put their own your own oxygen mask on first i want women to know to give themselves grace and not be so hard on ourselves we are so hard on ourselves and it it affects everything we do and so I just really want women to know that you're okay. No matter where you are, you are okay. You're not broken. Um, yeah. It's a just challenge. That. It's just a, one of the challenges that, that you faced yourself, Jen, in particular, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. that this is just a challenge in life. It doesn't mean that you're a less of a person or you're incapable or anything like that. It's just, this is just a challenge that you faced and we can face mm -hmm. that together. I think yeah. that's really, really cool. Exactly. That is really cool. <laughs> I'm so glad I met you. Me I'm too, so glad I, I just, yeah, here we were just at the <laughs> end of the hallway <laughs> between sessions. Yeah. It was really, really super cool. Thank you so much for sharing with us today. And I will put all the links down below for everybody okay. who wants to reach out to Jen. Make sure that you check her out if you've got anxiety or you think you might have ADHD. Mm -hmm. Just as a resource to start off with, see if it's helpful mm -hmm. and, um, you know, go for it. You don't yeah. have to stay where you are. Nobody does. You know, Brendan's always saying every day is a great day to grow. And mm -hmm. that's true for all of us, you know, including myself and Jen.